Clint Hurrell was undoubtedly one of the better managers in Major League Baseball over the past 20 years. He managed two teams during his 17-year managerial career, the Rockies from 2002 to 2009, and the Pirates from 2010 to 2019. In Colorado, Hurdle brought the Rockies to the World Series in 2007, to date the only manager in Rockies history to ever guide the team to the Fall Classic. In Pittsburgh, Hurdle broke a 20 consecutive season streak of losing records to guide the Pirates to the playoffs in 2013, their first winning record since 1992. He even won a playoff series that season, the wild card game against the Reds. It was the first Pirates postseason series win since 1979 and the most recent to this very day. Hurdle also guided the Pirates to the playoffs in 2014 and 2015, but lost in the first round both times. Overall in his managerial career, he has over 1,200 victories and 4 postseason appearances. Arguably, he's the greatest manager in Rockies history and undoubtedly the greatest Pirates manager since Jim Leland. He turned around two terrible franchises and brought them to the postseason, something not many managers can say. Despite the achievements, Hurdle is not without fault and he had one of the dumbest managerial decisions in baseball history. One that may have cost the Pirates the playoffs and it's a decision that does not get talked about often. After their first postseason appearance in 20 seasons in 2013, the Pirates looked poised to compete again in 2014. The team brought back much of the same lineup, kept big names in their bullpen, and also improved the pitching rotation, signing two key stars from free agency. Edinson Volquez and Vance Worley. Pittsburgh was hoping to improve from a wild card berth in 2013 to winning the division in 2014. Did they though? Well, it was a wild season to say the least. The Pirates got off to a slow start as Pittsburgh was 8 games under 500 on May 1st. The hitting struggled as the team hit an OPS of 647 in the month of April. While the hitting improved in May, the pitching suddenly faltered as the team went from an April ERA of 3.65 to a May ERA of 4.20. The early season struggles saw them enter June 5th 5 games under 500 and they didn't reach the 500 mark until June 24th. The Pirates bounced back however and regained momentum as summer started. After starting the season 35-38, and 38, Pittsburgh went 29-17 and 17 over their next 46 games to go 9 games over 500. They went from 4th place and 9 games out of 1st on June 20th to 2nd place and 1.5 games out on August 12th. It was an amazing 2 month turnaround for the team, only to lose 7 straight and 13 of their next 20. On September 4th, the Pirates were only 3 games over 500, sitting at a 71 and 68 record. They had just been swept by the 1st place St. Louis Cardinals and found themselves 5 games behind them for 1st in the division and 2 games back for the wild card with several teams in front of them in the standings. However, as if by magic, the Pirates got hot again and won 17 of their next 22 games to put themselves back into a playoff spot. Well, it wasn't magic. One major reason why they got hot was this guy, Garrett Cole. After a terrific rookie season in 2013, the young ace went on a cold streak to begin the season before getting hurt in early June. Cole missed several months due to injury but came back in late August just in time for a playoff run. When he came back, he was one of Pittsburgh's best pitchers, posting a 4-1 record with a 3.77 ERA in 7 games started entering the final series of the season. Speaking of the final series, the National League Central standings were going down to the wire as the season was concluding. Entering the final game of the season, the Pirates had clinched a wildcard spot, but were not eliminated from the division yet as they were a single game back of the Cardinals. Pittsburgh was also one game ahead of the San Francisco Giants for the first wildcard spot, however, even if the Pirates lost their final game and the Giants won their final game, giving them an identical record in the standings, Pittsburgh would still host the wildcard game because they had won the season series against San Francisco. This is where we see the highly questionable decision by Clint Hurdle. Let's look at the situation at hand again. Since Pittsburgh was still not eliminated from the division, that opened an interesting possibility. First off, should the Pirates lose their final game or the Cardinals win their final game, then the Cardinals would clinch the division. Should the Pirates win and the Cardinals lose, both teams would play a Game 163 tiebreaker in St. Louis to determine the National League Central winner. Winner of that hypothetical game moves on to the National League Division Series while the loser would host the Giants in the winner-take-all wildcard game. There's three scenarios at hand. 1. The Pirates win and the Cardinals lose. 2. The Pirates lose and the Cardinals win. And 3. 
both teams win or both teams lose. If scenario 2 or 3 happens, the Pirates are eliminated from the division. If scenario 1 happens, then that will force a tiebreaker game. In case anyone was wondering, the Pirates and Cardinals were not facing each other on the final day of the regular season. They were facing other teams. Now, the Pirates have one of two options. A. Rest all of their starters in the final game of the season and have them fully healthy and ready to play in the wildcard game for San Francisco. Or, option B. Decide not to do that and bank on situations out of your control just to put yourself in a not so ideal situation. Clint Hurdle who went with option B. I don't like the decision he made. I'm going to explain why he did it, why I think it's dumb, and the final outcome. Hurdle decided to start his ace Garrett Cole in the final game of the regular season in hopes to force a tiebreaker with the Cardinals. He then planned to have Jeff Locke start a potential game 163 and should the Pirates lose that potential game, start Edison Volquez against the Giants in the wildcard game. Winning the division naturally has its benefits, as the Pirates could avoid that one game playoff with San Francisco and prepare for the National League Division Series. That's why Hurdle decided to go all in and have his best pitcher start the final game of the season, but think of the permutations needed for the Pirates to win the division. In order for that to happen, the Pirates would need to A. Beat the Cincinnati Reds in the final game of the season, B. Have the Cardinals lose the final game of the season, and C. Beat the Cardinals on the road. If any one of those three events fails to happen, the Pirates will have to play in the wild card without their ace. And oh by the way, the team the Cardinals were facing and had to lose to were the Arizona Diamondbacks, aka the team with the worst record in Major League Baseball that season. Pittsburgh was legitimately banking on the worst team to beat one of the best. When you have the option not to rely on the worst team in the league to win, maybe you should take that choice and not let something out of your control decide your fate. It seems like a no-brainer. Rest everybody for the final game and have them ready to play the Giants at home with Garrett Cole on the mound. You might be thinking, did Cole struggle against the Giants in 2014? Maybe him not facing them wouldn't be the worst idea. Garrett Cole faced the Giants once that season. On May 7th, he threw 8 innings against San Francisco, striking out 7 and allowing 3 runs, picking up the win. Cole handled the Giants well in their only meeting and was pitching well in the past month nevertheless. Clint Hurl mentioned he discussed this with others in the organization and was adamant about the division. He stated, There's no way we're going to walk away from the opportunity to win our division. After 161 games of grit and fight and battle, we're trying to make history here. I understand Hurl's reasoning, but it's the obvious wrong choice in my opinion. I believe that, unless it is absolutely vital to make the playoffs, a team should never rely on factors they can't control especially a last place team with nothing to play for. I'm sure you know by now how that plan worked out. Naturally, the Pirates didn't win the division. Not only did they lose to the Reds, the Cardinals beat the Diamondbacks. They were 0 for 2 in game outcomes they needed. So, with Garrett Cole on the bench, Pittsburgh sent out star Edinson Volquez to start the wildcard game. A free agent pickup, Volquez was a terrific pitcher in 2014. In nearly 200 innings pitched, he posted a 3.04 ERA and 118 adjusted ERA. In case anyone was wondering, Volquez did not face the Giants in 2014, so it's not as if he had performed well against them. Alas, Garrett Cole was unavailable to pitch and the game was in the hands of Edinson Volquez. How did the game turn out though? Did Volquez pitch well at least? Well... And the curveball is hit high and deep to right field, it is gone! Clint Hurl gambled away his ace in hopes for better positioning, but that gamble didn't pay out. The Pirates lost the wildcard game 8-0 and have now gone 9 consecutive seasons without a playoff victory, with 2023 being the 10th should they fail once again. Edinson Volquez's performance in the 2014 wildcard game, which was 5 earned runs over 5 innings, is not the only reason why Pittsburgh lost that game. San Francisco's Mass and Bumgarner shut out the Pirates, limiting them to just 4 hits, all singles. The bats went ice cold and failed to do anything. It was both bad pitching and terrible hitting. However, it's worth mentioning that with Cole on the mound, anything could have happened. Perhaps Cole could have matched Mad Bum's performance, shutting out the Giants and forcing them to move to their bullpen. Certainly, the Pirates hitters could have fared better against the bullpen rather than against Bumgarner. Whatever the outcome of the game would have been with Cole on the mound is pure speculation. But what isn't speculation is the fact that Garrett Cole was on the bench instead of the mound and it's all due to the manager. 
It's the dumbest decision in the long tenured career of Clint Hurdle.